Hi Mark Savage here and welcome to my channel. Today, mini time. Now for some purists, 1959 to 2000 was the mini. These abominations aren't. Although they've been around now for 18 years. So they're getting their own little following. Original minis, tiny. Little brake horsepower engines, uh, 1275 GT, etc. But these ones started in 2001. The Mark 1, Mark 2, and Mark 3, which is out today, present. Mark 1 started in 2001, 2006. With two engines, 1.4, 1.6, and they did a supercharge. Mark 2, which this is, from 2007 to 2013. And then 2013, the Mark 3, which has got a 1.2 and 1.5 engine. They do this mammoth GP one that's 300 odd brake horsepower. Mental. This is my one. It has the vent here. Now, I was after not your average one. And I'd hate to build them because there's so many versions of them. This is the Camden Cooper S. Now the S stands for... Stupid. No. Silly. No. Sexy. Not bad. I don't know then. Originally, the S didn't stand for anything. Now I've read up a lot about this because obviously people think the S stands for supercharge. But the supercharge was only out from 2001 to 2006. Then it became a turbo engine. And I thought, why well, didn't they call it Mini Cooper T? According to the book, John Williams Cooper, S didn't stand for anything. It seemed to be more the dealers that called it either a sport or special. If anyone knows any different, write a little caption. But that's what I've read up so far. So all in, these are still very pretty cars. I like this one. It is the turbo, it is the Camden edition, and I said it's my one in two-tone colours. Mark 1, the headlights lifted up with it, Mark 2, they don't. And there's little variations um, to the extra bits they made for the Mark 2. The Mark 3 is a completely different animal. And these have, as I said, from 2001 to 2013, either a Mini 1 was a 1.4, 1.6, and a 1.6 Cooper, and then the 1.6 Cooper S. Let's have a look under the bonnet. Now, if it was the supercharged Mark 1, you'd have a big supercharge here, but here is a turbo. Now, all I have done to it is put a Piper Cross Lifetime air filter on here. The reason why I've done that is because in the next video, I am upgrading this little car with stuff that makes it more Mark Savage. <laughs> Let's say that. Very simple engines to work on. Brake horsepower. Do you know that's a minefield? Um, we start from 70 brake to 112 for the littler ones. Then we start getting the uh, supercharged 179 brake. And then after that, it seemed to go a bit wishy washy down to 174, 172, 184, 186, 190 on some of the Clubmans, 2010. It's a real, real minefield. And then we've got the John Cooper one that is 210 brake horsepower. Me, the reason why I've stuck this pipe across the air filter is I'm getting this tuned, which is not a lot of money between oh, 150 to 200 pounds, and they up the brake horsepower by resetting all the parameters of the car, longer shifts, pops and bangs, etc. But make sure you get a quality person that will do it and have a backup drive so you can put it back to normal. I've been told running this on super, having a much better pipe across, not just not pipe across, but a much better air filter, and the tuning, we're talking 217 brake. That'd be bloody amazing. Whether the engines can withstand it, just comes down to servicing. Now these are notorious, unfortunately, for a cam chain problem. Same as the N60 odd uh, BMW 116 engines. Um, I had one video on here, the cam chain itself doesn't go, it's the followers, the plastic bits. If you don't have one that's regularly serviced, they wear and then you start getting this rattle, which they're called a death rattle, and your engine just throw it away. This hasn't got this, this is regularly serviced, got 70,000 miles on the clock. It is one you're gonna to wanna to get. Not 70,000, I just mean one that's been serviced, well maintained, you've got a good one. That's my main tip. Make sure you get one that's serviced. Not sketchy, mate did it crap. Make sure you get one that's properly documented. They're gonna last a lot, lot longer. Pop this down. 
the bonnet, or in America, the hood. Huh? Ah, uh, never mind. That was good. Wife shaking the head, no. <laughs> Let's look around the car. Being the Camden edition, we get these ugly, <laughs> look like hubcaps. However, I'm sort of beginning to like them and love them, I guess, because it makes it, well, this special edition. Also, a lot of these have this now where they've got the little cap rather than the fill of it. I do like that as well. The spoiler, got two little vents in it. Yeah, look at the aerial. That wasn't like that until I started driving it and it sort of fell apart. So I've got one on order. In fact, I've got quite a few little bits on order to make this mine. I like these. Front end, you always know it's going to be a Cooper S because we have the nice big scoop in the front. Again, round the sides. Now, the arse end. The rear, the boot, or I don't know what mountains call it. Anyway, these twin exhausts, they are absolutely filthy and won't look like that when I'm finished. Let's look inside. A little bit dirty. This, as I said, is a Camden edition, which comes with a little sticker saying Camden. Well, not a sticker. Nice interior. Is that white or grey? I'm not sure. It needs cleaning, which it will be. In the rear, enough to put a bag, very small people, as long as you have no legs. But it's a mini, what do you expect? I do like this addition. Stereo speakers, another two here, and a large one at the back. I have to say, it does sound really nice. Sitting in one. On this model, we have the push in for your key, and push button start with your clutch down. My service light is on, but it has been serviced. You can change all these to whatever you want, temperature gauge and set info and etc. I've got the speedo here because this massive clock here, petrol gauge, radio, I don't like the volume control on it. I think I could have been better, but I do however like these little dials and etc. You've also got a few up here, mood lighting, which adjusts these. You can see my fingers there in orange, purpley color. And there, they're blue. It also does the side bits here. I mean, it's a little thing, isn't it? But there you go. And your main light. As I said, this is the little control panel as well. Connect your phone. You have your little bits in there. And also a hidey hole one. I'm assuming that's there because maybe you've got your sat nav version. This is not a sat nav version. Temperature gauges, etc. And your little cup holders. It's a six speed gearbox. And driving position, to be honest with you, is actually quite nice. A adjustment, they don't fold though. And then off, and pop your key out. When it comes to your boots, well, you've got enough for your junk, haven't you? A few shopping bags, that's all you need. Chewing gums as well. The seats do fold, and it becomes a, well, a hatch, which is great for these. As I said, there's so many different additions and so many different bits and bobs you can do with these cars. I think it'd be terrible to actually manufacture each day. Can you imagine, like, what we're we doing today, lads? I've got no idea. Let's just slap whatever we've got on there. A little tiny bit of damage at the front here. Now, so stay with me to find out what I'll be doing to my little car. Remember, standard 174 brake horsepower. I've been told 172. Also looked at 179. And yet the book says 175. Oh, I just don't know, to be honest with you. But it'll be tuned i'm going to get some decals on here as well i've got some special ones being made for me I'm not going to tell you where they're going to go you have to watch the next video i'm going to sort the wheels out because they're curbed i'm also going to upgrade the bulbs as well there's little kits you can get nowadays how i've got to get in here and get some more i'm just not quite sure but it's going to be done i'm going to get led ones i mean it's nice projection white lights and you've got little yellow side ones i really hate that it's really tacky as well. Some windscreen wipers for it. The old ones, oh my god, driving the first day. Wee! Wee! It drove me mad. It's fighting. But do you know what? If I'm honest with you, so many parts are cheap for this. So it's not too bad, to be honest with you. That pipe across air filter, 30 quid. Do you know what I mean? I took the old one out of there. That was not that old, to be honest with you. It was just nice getting a better one in there. How do they drive? Well, let's pop in the car and have a quick drive with me. The gearbox on these is really, really nice. 
so easy to drive. The wheels are on all four corners, which makes, to be honest with you, driving a very pleasurable experience. Unless you've been driving a great big Jag like I was before. And the first massive click noise you just heard there was the central locking, locking the doors. Really Neanderthal, like a bang! Scared the hell out of me when I first drove down the road. They do go really, really well. You can put your foot down and you can just keep going with these nice little cars. Only hit 4,000 rev sales in second gear. I dread to think what it'd be like if I actually just floored it, which I'm not gonna do. A little bit of wheel spin. They do go so well. You can't escape this massive clock, can you? <laughs> you know? Someone said, what speed are you going? I got no idea, officer. But let's say it does show it on here as well, if I can find a little bit now that goes through it. It also has a gear change indicator, screaming you to change gear, which I think is quite nice. It's got the 33 miles an hour and etc. doing it. A beautiful sunny day, but believe you me, it's not very warm as I think you see it's seven degrees. So why am I wearing shorts? The wife says I need Jack and Moe trousers now because I'm become a bit of a fat bastard. Isn't that right, dear? Yes. <laughs> I have put a little bit of weight on, thank you. I'm not feeling emotional about it at all. <laughs> but they do drive really well. I drove a Mark 1 supercharged before I bought this one and I found it was very rattly. It wasn't a back road anyway. I just find it very pleasant and very fun to drive. It's got a lot of power when you need to go. They handle so well. You've only got to look. No real roll of the car, they're quite firm. This one has sports mode on it as well. I don't know whether the sport button actually gives you any more brake horsepower or just it's different suspension and steering and so on. I'm gonna have to read up on that. But otherwise from that, I've got to say, it feels so much fun to drive. Very responsive steering. Not bad at all. Now where you've been as well, because they are nice. Easy to park, easy to get into any gaps. Fun to drive, very good miles per gallon. You can pick these up nowadays Mark 1 supercharged ones, and if from a grand upwards, you can pick up some John William Cooper ones, and they can be in your, you know, five, six thousand pound mark. Um, this little 2009 model, especially just in Camden, they're going for about five grand, and I got a very good deal on this one, so I didn't actually pay that for it. So I'm actually quite excited to be able to spend a few extra pennies that I saved back out on it, which is sort of counterproductive, but I'm gonna make it mine. And I think that's what being a mini owner is about, making it yours. So that's what I'm gonna do. Stripe it up a little bit, play with the engine brake horsepower, and then add a few nice little touches. And, uh, I'm sure they're gonna stop me. And happy days. I'm assuming that when uh, I get this chipped, there's a little bit of a, which feels like turbo lag, you slam your foot down and then it sort of takes off. I'm assuming that will all be gone because they're all made a lot less than they really can. I'm not stupid enough to not know that it's a 1.6 turbo engine and I'm not gonna flog it to death. Good all round view as well. This pillar is not scarily huge. The Jag, I couldn't see bug all sometimes was going around roundabouts. This is tiny, all round good vision on it as well. So to end, really good value, lots of fun. Two seater car plus two very small seats at the back. Um, you're not gonna get four full size adults in these cars. You don't buy them for that, do you? God, do you know, I tried to find decent somewhere to blare out the stereo and it's just crud. I suppose you get for Christmas music though. Right. Mini with the rave did mini bed, didn't it? Oh, fucks. <laughs> Same without being on a bike. Huh? You only wave when you're on a bike. <laughs> or you nod actually. I'm talking of bikes, fun. Ducati Moist Strider! Where the hell are hey. you going? <laughs> I just see a Ducati Moist Strider on the road! Why am I not on a bike? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Too many people do wave at each other, don't they? <laughs> Is that just me waving a bit round, weirdo? <laughs> weirdo. Well, this is all good. <laughs> I thought they would. I don't know the old wave each other. No. Sort of beep, beep, beep. Fuck me, I can't see nothing in this sun. Right. Just a bit. So you're saying I shouldn't wave other minis going, woo, woo, woo. No, Mini that's truck. sad. Perhaps that's what the S stands for. <laughs>
<laughs> wow. Feeling the love. Less times are sad because you wave at people with minis. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. So there you go. Nice little drive, nice little look round, and what is up and coming, watch my next video. Thank you so much. Like, share, and subscribe. Stay with me. After this, two, back to motorbikes again. Take care of yourselves on the road in these bloody cold days. Bye-bye.